So hi there students, welcome back to another video lesson. So we are now on the last quarter of our video lesson for grade 10 mathematics. So for this video lesson, ang pag-aaralan po natin is illustrating measures of position. So during your grade 7, uh, na i-discuss na po sa inyo, na pag-aralan nyo na yung topics on measures of central tendency. So which are the mean, median, mode, as well as yung standard deviation and variance, yung measures of variability. So, connected po syempre ang measures of position dun sa measures of central tendency. So, we're in, uh, kailangan po natin ditong i-repress uh, yung inyong uh, nalalaman, kung meron man, sa topics on measures of central tendency. So, basically, uh, madali lang naman yung process ng pagkuha ng uh, sagot dito sa ating topic. So, it's just that you, you, you need to analyze, you need, you need to use the formula in the way that they should be used. So, may mga formula, formulas tayo dito na ipipresent and then magiging madali yon para sa inyo kasi meron kayong guide. Ang kailangan lang ninyo nga is pag-analyze ng ating mga uh, problem. So, let's start. So, to start our discussion, let us have the lesson objectives. So, first, we will define statistics and its types. So, before we time proceed sa measure sa position, kung ano nga ba yung measure, measure sa position na yun, so, we need to uh, discuss what is statistics. So, ano nga bang statistics na yan? So, Ang iba sa inyo, alam nyo na kung ano yung statistics. Anong meron sa statistics? So, di ba, uh, napag-aralan nyo na yung algebra, geometry, ayan yung probability. So, ngayon, statistics naman ang ating pag-aaralan. So, after that, we will illustrate measures of position, which are quartiles, deciles, and percentiles. So, meron tayong tatlong uri ng measures of position na minimeasure. Okay, so, kung anong pinagkaiba ng quartiles, deciles, and percentiles, may discuss po yan sa mga susunod na video lessons. Now, let us start our discussion by defining what is statistics. So, what is statistics? So, statistics is a branch of mathematics that deals with collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting data to come up with a useful and meaningful information. So, so kung yung uh, geometry, it has something to do with uh, uh, measurement of sizes, shapes, and so, dito naman sa statistics, ang concern niya is yung collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting data. Okay, so ang focus natin dito is yung data. So, paano ba tayo nagko-collect ng mga data? Okay, so di ba may mga iba't ibang methods tayong ginagamit para mag-collect ng data? Like for example, yung interview, ayan, yung, uh, yung mga uh, opinion ng mga tao, ayan. So, meron din naman tayong survey. And then, organizing and presenting. So, organizing and presenting, tandem yung dalawa na yan. So, organizing and presenting, dito natin uh, ginagamit yung mga uh, tabular and graphical uh, presentation ng mga data. So, syempre, may mga ways kung paano natin pinepresent at paano ino-organize yung data pa para mas maging clear, para maging mas informed tayo dun sa data na yun. And then, also, Aside from that, we also analyze the data. Okay, so syempre, para magkaroon tayo ng conclusions, ng generalizations, ng opinions, ayan, kailangan din natin syempre i-analyze yung data. So, kailangan natin i-analyze yan para at least maging sure tayo kung ano man ang gusto nating uh, patunayan o kung ano man ang gusto nating uh, malaman. And then, after that, analyze natin, i-interpret natin yun. Syempre, Bago, uh, after natin i-analyze, uh, after natin pag-aralan yung data, tsaka natin i-interpret kung anong meron dun sa data na yon. Okay, so minsan kasi hindi natin alam na 
statistics na pala yun. So, statistics, uh, present yan sa ating uh, daily living. Like, for example, sa weather forecast, ayan, sa yung pagal pagalaw ng piso, tsaka ng dolyar, ayan, yung, ano pa, yung effects ng drugs and medicines, ayan, statistics lahat po yan. So, at marami pang iba. So, let us have branch up statistics. So, meron tayong dalawang uh, branch of statistics. Yung una po natin is yung descriptive statistics. And then, yung pangalawa naman is inferential statistics. So, how do this uh, branch of or types of statistics differ to one another? So, kapag descript descriptive statistics po, this is used to describe and summarize collected sample data. This data can be shown using graphical and tabular representations. So, so based from the definition, it is used to describe. Okay, yung root word ng descriptive is describe. Okay, ipinaliliwanag, ipinakikita. Okay, so, describe natin kung anong meron dun sa mga data na nagather natin, na nakolek natin. Okay, so, uh, pwede nating ipakita, ipresent yung ating mga data using graphical and tabular representations. So, kapag uh, graphical uh, representations, so, from the root word graphs, so, ginagamitan po natin yan ng uh, mga pie graph, bar graph, line graph, ayan, frequency polygon, histogram, Okay, so, pictograph. So, yan po yung mga tinatawag nating graphical representations. So, syempre, bawat data may kanya-kanya, may appropriate na graph na ginagamit natin. Hindi lang ibig sabihin na yung data na yun, lagi lang natin gagamitin is, halimbawa, bar graph. Syempre, nakadepende din kung ano ang data na ating uh, pinepresent. And then, after that, we also have tabular representation. So, tabular, gumagamit naman tayo dito ng mga tables. Okay, so, frequency distribution table, yun ang pinaka example natin dito. Then, we have types of descriptive statistics. This includes frequency distribution. So, yung sinabi ko kanina, frequency distribution. And then, as well as yung central tendency and variability. So, yun yung mga descriptive statistics, mga types ng descriptive statistics. So, nasabi ko na kanina yung central tendency. So, central tendency, so, this includes mean or average, median, the middle value, and then mode is the most frequent occurring data. And then, variability. Okay. So, ayan. This includes uh, range, average deviation, standard deviation, and uh, variance. So, Sa variability, variability, ang minimeasure natin dyan is yung kung gaano ka-disperse, kung gaano kalapit, kalalapit yung mga data. Okay, so, yun po ang descriptive statistics. So, another type of statistics is the inferential or the inferential statistics. So, inferential statistics is used to analyze sample data which leads to inferences, generalization, conclusion, and decision of the population data. So, we have there the word sample and then population. So, by the way, so review lang natin kayo sa sample and population. So, sample, ito po yung subset ng population ng kabuuan. So, yung population yung kabuuan. Okay, like for example, nakakaroon ng survey, halimbawa, dun sa, halimbawa, sa parating na election na yan. So, siyempre, tinitignan kung sino ba yung mga presidential uh, bet yung mga nakunguna sa mga survey survey. Okay, so syempre hindi naman kailangan tanungin lahat ng mga tao dito sa Pilipinas. So kumukuha lang ng sample. Okay, like for example, 1000 people yung kanilang sinurvey, yung kanilang tinanong. And then from from the results of the uh, sample data na in survey na ginawa nila dun sa mga samples na yan, 1000 samples. Kukuha sila ngayon ng mga tinatawag nating mga inferences, generalization, and then conclusion. So, doon sila magbe-base kung paano nila ilalabas, ipepresent yung naging data. Okay, so, halimbawa, meron din naman uh, ngayon, di ba, yung bago 
uh, pinagamit or nagpabakuna ang mga tao dun sa COVID-19 vaccine, di ba? So, hindi naman basta-basta uh, ginawa yung vaccine na yun and then i- i- i-inject sa mga tao. Siyempre, nagkaroon muna yun ng mga series of test. Okay, so kung baga, meron muna silang sample na ginamit and then, uh, once na okay naman yung sample, ayun, uh, tsaka nila, uh, tsaka sila magkakaroon ng conclusion, ng decision kung alin ba dun sa mga vaccine, vaccines na yun ang uh, mas mataas yung ano, yung level of efficiency. Okay, so alin ba doon yung, di ba, alin, alin doon yung gamot na mas uh, makakapag-lesson uh, ng risk ng uh, COVID-19. Okay, so, and then another one is hypothesis testing. So, isang uh, common na ginagamit sa inferential statistics is yung uh, hypothesis testing. Okay, like for example, So, si teacher halimbawa, nakakaroon siya ng uh, experiment. Okay, so halimbawa, si class A, so habang nagdi-discuss si teacher, gumamit siya ng TV. So, TV-based instruction siya. And then, yung class B naman is yung traditional lang. Okay, so lecture discussion lang. And then, after niyang uh, ituro yung lesson na yon dun sa dalawang klase na yung class A and class B, magbibigay siya ng exam. Okay, so pareho yung ibibigay niyang exam dun sa mga students. Pareho din yung lesson na kanyang ipapresent. And then, nais niyang malaman kung nakakaroon ba ng significant difference. May pagkakaiba ba dun sa mga students from class A na ginamitan niya ng TV-based instruction. And then, yung sa class B naman na traditional way of teaching lang ginamit niya. Okay, so yan po yung isa sa mga uh, pwede nating uh, gamitin for inferential statistics, yung hypothesis testing. So, hypothesis, dinidefine natin niya as an educated guess. Okay? So, let us have measures of central tendency muna. So, during your early years in high school, Measures of central tendency was discussed to you. This includes mean, median, and mode. So, during your grade 7, na i-discuss na po sa inyo yung topics on measures of central tendency. Okay, so kung natatandaan nyo pa yon, ito po sila yung mean, yung median, and mode. So, ano po ba ang pinagkakaiba ng mga tatlo na yan? So, pag sinabi natin mean, ito yung average. So, paano natin ginukuha yung average? So, ina-add lahat natin yung mga uh, scores, yung mga data, and then, i-divide natin kung ilan yung uh, number of items. Okay. Like, for example, kung kukunin mo ang general average mo, so, i-add mo lahat ng grades mo, lahat ng 8 subjects na yun, tapos i-divide sa 8. Makukuha mo yung average mo. And then, kapag median naman, ang ginagawa natin dito, so, kinukuha natin yung pinakagit ng value, the middlemost value. So, in order to get the middlemost value, the median, yung midpoint na tinatawag natin. So, kailangan natin i-arrange yung mga data either in increasing or decreasing order. And then, yung mode naman, so, isa to sa mga madali. So, mode, we are only looking for the most frequently occurring data. So, tinitignan natin sa mga data, alin yung lumitaw ng tatlong beses, apat na beses, limang beses. Okay, so like for example, kung tatanungin mo ang mga students kung alin ang paborito nilang subjects, okay, diba? Itatali mo yon. Makikita mo agad kung, kung ano yung mode. Okay, so kung ano yung subject yung pinaka paborito nila. And then, aside from this, we can also divide data into more parts having equal sizes. These are called partition values. So, ito connected na siya sa ating new uh, lesson, which is measure sa position. So, kung gusto daw natin malaman kung paano i-divide yung mga data into more parts na equal sizes. So, ang tawag daw po doon is partition values. Okay. So, kung kanina, doon sa lesson objectives natin, na i-discuss na po sa inyo yung 
ano ang nilalaman ng measures of central uh, measures of position yung quartiles, deciles and percentiles. So ito yung sinasabi niya na partition values. Dinidivide natin yung data into equal sizes. So ano yung quartile, decile and percentile, i-discuss ko po lahat 'yan. Now, let us have our main discussion which is measures of position. So, measures of position includes dividing the data into four parts, 10 parts, and 100 parts of equal sizes. Okay. The corresponding partition values are called quartiles, deciles, and percentiles. So, in measures of position, dinidivide niya nga yung data into different parts, equal parts. Okay. So, four parts... 10 parts, and 100 parts. Ang tawag dun sa partition values na yun is yung quartiles. So, yung quartiles dun po sa 4 parts. Deciles naman dun sa 10 parts. And then, percentiles yung 100 parts. So, kung paano uh, compute yung median, so, ganun din po ang pag-compute natin dito sa quartiles, deciles, and percentiles. So, kung ano lang yung difference niya is yung location. Okay. So, since hinahati nga natin yung data into different parts, so, 4, 10, and 100, so, uh, kasi sa median po, kasi ang hinahanap lang natin is yung nasa gitna mismo, yung middle value. So, dito, para mas makita natin yung uh, pagkakahati ng mga data into 4, 10, and 100 parts, kailangan natin kunin yung location. Okay. So, yun lang yung pinagkaiba. So, let us consider the midpoint of two numbers, A and B, on the number line. So, which is A plus V all over 2. So, ayan po yung ating uh, number line. So, ito po yung A. So, parang nagsisilbi siyang coordinate ng X. And then, yung coordinate ng Z is yung B. And then, if we are asked to identify the midpoint, yung nasa gitna ng dalawang uh, numbers na yan, A and B. So, we'll just simply add them and then divided by 2. Okay, like for example, ito ang value niya is uh, 2. Ito namang B is 8. So, kapag in po natin yung 2 tsaka 8, we will get 10. And then, divide natin yung 10 sa 2, ang lilitaw na sagot ay 5. Okay, so 5 po ang magsisilbing median. Okay, nasa gitna. Okay, so mapapansin natin, yung layo ng 2 sa 5 ay tatlo. Yung 5 naman sa 8, tatlo din. Okay. So, kaya, tinatawag nating midpoint yung 5. Kasi nasa gitna siya. So, find the coordinates of the midpoint, yung Q1, yung quartile 1, of XY. Okay. So, ngayon naman, kukunin natin yung midpoint sa gitna ng A, tsaka a plus B over 2. So, kung kanina, X tsaka Z. Ngayon naman, X, Y. So, yung pagitan ng X tsaka Z, diba, is yung uh, A plus B over 2, yung coordinate ng Y. Ngayon naman, ang kukunin natin yung pagitan ng X tsaka Y. Yung Q1. Okay. So, ang gagawin lang po natin dito, so, para mas makita nyo, Q1 or Q sub 1 is equal to X plus Y all over 2. And then, isa-substitute natin ngayon yung coordinates ng x at y. So, for x, we have a. And then, for uh, y naman, we have a plus b all over 2. So, a plus b all over 2 divided by 2. So, ang gagawin natin dito is kailangan muna natin kunin yung LCD ng nasa denominator. A numerator. So, kailangan natin silang i-add. So, yung A, ang uh, denominator niya, 1. Tapos, yung A plus B naman, 2. So, yung LCD, 1, 2 is 2. So, isusulat natin siya ng ganito. And then, 2 divided by 1, that is 2 times A, 2A. Plus, 2 Divided by 2, ito, 
that is 1 times a plus b, yun pa rin. So, a plus b. And then, all over to ngayon. Next, i-combine like terms natin. So, 2a plus a plus b. So, yung, mag yung magkamukha is yung 2a tsaka a. So, 2a plus a, that is 3a plus b all over 2. Tapos, all over 2. Next, kailangan natin kunin yung reciprocal ng denominator. So, para siyang fraction. So, magiging 3a plus b over 2. And then, etong 2, ang reciprocal niya is uh, 1 half. So, magiging times 1 half. And then, multiply lang natin. So, 3a plus b times 1. That is 3a plus b. All over 2 times 2, that is 4. So, ibig sabihin, yung coordinate ng ating midpoint Q1 is 3a plus b all over 4. So, pwede natin siyang isulat dito as 3a plus b all over 4. So, what about the coordinates of the midpoint? So, Q3 naman, quartile 3 of YZ. So, yung sa kabilang side naman, yung uh, midpoint ng Y tsaka Z is yung Q sub 3. So, kailangan natin i-add yung midpoint natin na nakuha kanina, yung A plus B all over 2 tsaka yung coordinate ng Z which is P. So, pareho lang din naman ng Q1. So, this time, Y plus Z over 2. So, y, that is a plus b all over 2 plus b. Then, over 2. So, pinaliliwanag ko lang po sa inyo kung paano na de-derive yung mga sagot. Okay, so, kunin natin yung LCD. So, ayan, a plus b over 2 to yung kanyang denominator, yung binaman, 1. So, LCD, 2 and 1 is 2. 2 pa din. So, sulat natin 2. So, 2 divided by 2, that is 1. Times A plus B, A plus B pa rin. Plus, 2 divided by 1, that is 2, times B, 2B. All over 2. So, mangyayari, Combine like terms, so a plus b plus 2b, so b tsaka 2b, add sila, so that is a plus 3b, all over 2. Tapos, multiply natin siya sa reciprocal ng denominator, which is 2. So, yan, yung reciprocal ng 2 is 1 half. So, multiply lang natin yan, that is a plus 3b, all over 4. So, ito po ang coordinate ng ating Q sub 3. So, sulat lang natin dito A plus 3B all over 4. So, consider this. 10 students are lined up in a row. If John is the third tallest student, what does it mean? So, ito yung mga 10 students na sinasabi natin. And then, consider natin na yung pinakauna Ito po yung ating smallest, ito yung pinakamaliit pinaka sa lahat. And then, yung pinakahuli, ito naman yung pinakamatangkad, tallest. So, based from the problem, John is the third tallest. So, so siya yung pangatlo sa pinakamatangkad. Okay, so nasaan si John? So, ilolocate natin siya, ito po si John. Kasi third tallest. Now, what does it mean? So, yan tanong niya, what does it mean? So, ibig sabihin po niyan, kung third tallest si John, ibig sabihin po, 70% of the stu students are shorter than John. So, paano natin nasabi na 70% 70, oh, 70 of the students are shorter than John? Okay, so, bawat po kasi student dyan, since nampu sila, kada student, 
nag-i-indicate na 10%. Okay, so, pang wala siya. Pag, ano natin, pag in-arrange natin, mag-umpisa sa pinakamaliit. Okay. So, big sabihin, itong, nauna sa kanya, itong pito na to, yan yung 70% na tinutukoy ko. Okay, so 70%, 70 of the students are shorter than dyan. So, ano naman yung nasa counterpart niya? Itong dalawa na to. So, ibig sabihin po niyan, 20% of the students are taller than dyan. So, syempre, kabaligtaran ng shorter is taller. So, kung 70% or 7 students are shorter than John, 20% of the students or 2 students are taller than John. So, consider this. So, age of 10 kids in Barangay San Fernando. So, ito po yung edad ng 10 bata sa Barangay San Fernando. So, 5, 7, 2, 1, 3, 8, 6, 5, 9, 4. So, yan po yung mga edad ng mga bata. So, ang una natin gagawin dyan is yung i-arrange natin yung mga edad. Okay, so, first, arrange the scores in ascending order. So, when we are talking about ascending, ibig sabihin pataas. Ina-arrange natin yung mga scores, yung mga data, pataas. Pag descending naman, pababa. So, paano yan? Ayan. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, dahil pataas, nauna po yung pinakamababa, which is 1, and then yung pinakamataas, 9. Now, let us identify the first quartile, yung lower quartile natin. So, alimbawa, ihatiin natin yung uh, mga edad ng 10 bata into 4 equal parts. So, ayan. So, sa gitna po ng 2 and 3, nandun po located yung lower quartile, yung Q sub 1. And then, sa, sa pagitan naman ng 5 tsaka 5, so, nandun naman po yung quartile 2 o yung tinatawag natin middle quartile or yung tinatawag talaga natin commonly as median. Okay, the middle value. And then, yung ating upper quartile naman, yung Q sub 3 is nasa pagitan po ng 7 and 8. Okay, so, ayan. So, at yan po yung una nating type 4 uh, measure sa position, yung tinatawag nating quartile. Okay, so, kitang-kita naman, dinivide niya yung data into 4 equal parts. So, ayan, ayan, mapakita natin ito. Ayan. Okay, so, ito yung unang portion. Ito yung pangalawa. Ito naman yung pang pangatlo. And then, ito naman yung pang-apat. So, ilang beses niya hinate yung data natin? Tatlo lang. Okay. So, kasi kapag apat, magiging lima yun. Okay. So, lower quartile, middle quartile, and upper quartile. So, kapag tinanong tayo kung ano yung uh, lower quartile, so, nasa pagitan po ng 2 and 3. So, edad na 2 and 3. Kapag naman middle quartile, as you can see, sa pagitan ng 5 and 5, 5 pa rin. So, ibig sabihin, middle age natin is 5 years old. And then, yung upper quartile naman natin, so, nasa pagitan ng 7 and 8. So, let us have the definition of quartile. So, what is a quartile? So, quartiles are the scores which divides the data into 4 equal parts. So, ayan. So, di ba meron tayong quarters? So, di ba, yung uh, school year natin, hinahati siya, hinahati siya into 4 quarters. So, ayan, 4. So, kaya yung mga scores, yung data, dinidivide niya into 4 equal parts. So, ang tawag po doon is quartiles. And then, 25% of the distribution are below the first quartile. 50% are below the second quartile or the middle quartile. And then, 75% are below the upper quartile. So, para mas maintindihan nyo yung mga percentage na yan, so let us have an illustration. So, ayan. Halimbawa, ito po yung 
ating data. Halimbawa, buo pa yan. And then, kapag hinati po natin yan, data na yan, into four equal parts, makikita po natin dyan na meron tayong lower quartile, middle quartile, and then upper quartile. So, yung 25% na sinasabi ko kanina na below the first quartile, ito po yun. Ito, di ba? Ito ang position ng lower quartile. Yan. Ito siya, yung naka-arrow na yan. So, ibig sabihin, itong portion na to, below the first quartile po yan. And then, 50% are below the second quartile. So, middle quartile, ito naman po siya. So, nasa gitna. Okay, so ibig sabihin, 50% ang mas mababa sa kanya, diretso. And then, Kapag naman upper quartile, ito, yung nasa bandang dulo. So, ibig sabihin, 75% ang mas mababa sa upper quartile. So, again, yung middle quartile natin dyan is yung tinatawag na median. So, let us now proceed to deciles. So, what is a decile? So, deciles are the nine scores which divide the data into 10 equal parts. So, ayan yung buong data natin. So, assume na lang natin na buo siya. So, and then, hinati siya into 10 equal parts. So, yung mga 9 scores na sinasabi natin kanina, ayan. So, from D1, D sub 1 to D sub 9. So, D sub 1 corresponds to 10%. Okay, 10%, D sub 2, 20%, and then up to 90%. Okay, and then, D sub 5, ito po yung ating middle value. So, D sub 5 is equal to quartile 2, the middle quartile. So, kung ano po ang value ng quartile 2, yun din po ang value ng fifth decile. Okay, so, kanyari, mga scores yan. 50% uh, of the students score is less than or equal to ganyan. Okay, so, ibig sabihin, 50% yung mas mababa sa kanya, and then 50% din naman yung mas mataas sa kanya. Okay. So, again, D sub 5 is equal to the value of quartile 2. So, 9 scores lang, it's because, ayan, kasi kapag 10 yung scores, 11 na yun. 11 equal parts na yun. Okay. So, that is decile. Now, let us have uh, our last type of measures of position is percentile. So, what is a percentile? So, percentiles are the 99 scores which divides the data into 100 equal parts. Okay. So, since percent, yan, percent, 100 yun. So, we have 99 scores. So, divides the data into 100 equal parts. So, Hinati natin data na isang daan parte. Okay, so kung kanina 4 at 10 pag percentiles, isang daan. So, consider natin ito. So, yung nasa quartiles. So, ayan, yung uh, lower quartile at yung 25th percentile, pareho lang po ng value yan. It's because Q sub 1, ito po yung nagko-correspond sa 25%. And then naman, yung quartile 2, ito naman po yung 50%. So, ibig sabihin, uh, quartile 2, decile 5, and uh, percentile 50 have the same value. And then, quartile 3 naman, so, ayan, ito naman yung 75%. That is why Q sub 3 is equal to P sub 75, the 75th percentile. Okay, so, ayan. So, another using uh, the illustration of deciles. So, ayan. So, dito po, P sub 10 or percentile 10 is equal to D sub 1, the first decile. Decile 2 is equal to P sub 20. Ayan. P 
Pare-pareho lang po yan ng value. Ayan. So, again, P sub 50, D sub 5, and Q sub 2. Pare-pareho po yung mga median, the middle value. So, after discussing with you the uh, introduction to measure supposition, our next video lesson will be calculating specified measure of position of a set of data. So, we will be discussing quartiles of ungrouped data, deciles of ungrouped data, percentiles of ungrouped data. So, di ba meron tayong group and ungroup. So, malalaman naman natin na ungroup yun kapag less than 30. Kapag naman greater than 30 yung number of uh, scores, yung number of data, frequency. So, that, that is considered as group data. So, isa-isa ko po yung i-discuss sa inyo. Quartiles, deciles, and then percentiles.